Drawing a force diagram is really important to be able to tackle questions to do with forces, such as pulley problems or blocks on slopes. It, they are so, so useful. And sometimes you might just get asked to draw a force diagram. So in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to look at drawing a force diagram to represent each of these situations. Okay? So it's kind of a, a situation that kind of develops as we go down. So for number one, we've got a book that is at rest on a tabletop. So I would draw the tabletop, and here is the book. Okay, and I'm going to model it as a rectangle. Okay. Now, because we just have the book is at rest on a tabletop, it is not moving left or right. Um, we'll have the weight acting vertically downwards. And to stop it sinking through the table, there must be a normal reaction force. The book is in contact with the surface, so there will be a normal reaction force that acts perpendicular to the surface. Okay? And so we label that R, the normal reaction force. So that is my diagram for number one. Now, when I draw this, you can see that I've kind of embellished it. I don't need to draw... Uh, the table, and I don't need to draw the book as a rectangle. Okay, so this diagram is embellished to help me visualize what's going on. And if I was drawing this just to kind of aid me, I would draw it like that. But you will see some force diagrams that are just drawn like this. The book is represented as a particle. And you have the weight acting vertically downwards, and you have the normal reaction force acting vertically upwards. Okay? And that is my force diagram. So it's a little bit minimalist, um, but that's all I would need. So number two, a book is pulled by a light inextensible string across a smooth tabletop. So just because the book is now moving doesn't mean that the weight or the normal reaction force are no longer there. They will both still be there. The weight acting vertically downwards, the normal reaction force perpendicular to the surface. But now it's being pulled by a light and extensible string. Is it being pulled to the right? Is it being pulled to the left? Doesn't matter. You choose. Okay, you make a choice. So I'm going to say it's being pulled to the right. And when it's being pulled, um, there will be tension in the string. And so we're going to label that as capital T. So on my minimalist diagram here, here we go. Now we've got uh, the tension added. For number three, a book is pulled by a light and extensible string across a rough tabletop. So previously, we had a smooth tabletop, which meant that there was no friction. But now that the tabletop is rough, there is friction. And friction acts against the direction of motion. So if the block is moving towards the right, then the friction must act in the opposite direction. And I'm going to label that as FR. You can just label it as F. It's really up to you. So on my minimalist diagram, I'll have FR working towards the left. Now, if you chose to draw the tension going that way, okay, so the block is moving to the left, then friction must therefore be going towards the right, okay? And so that is how I could draw a force diagram in each of these scenarios.